Hi, I'm Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, and this is episode 167. Um, we did wrap up our knit along, so we do have a prize to give away. It was um, donated by a viewer who sewed the bag himself. And it's super cute little koi fishies. And I love that the inside is made from a pajama shirt. So it's striped, and you can see like the pocket of the shirt. Super cute. I love it. This was hard to give away because it was so cute, but I thought it was perfect for our under the scene it along. It's a little fishies. So we'll go ahead and pick. And the winner is number four. So really quick, we'll go and check and see who number four is. So it's a Liz Stitches. So this, her first name is Betts. And she's from Illinois. And she made a Susan the Social Crab. See, let's turn it this way. I had a really fun, colorful yarn. So Betts, please um, PM me on Ravelry with your full, full name and address. And I will get that sent out. Oh, I don't know when we'll do another knit along. Um, I don't know. I want to find like a really fun pattern. I don't know that we'll do one of mine. Although I am kind of itching to make some lace. Um, but we'll, we'll keep that up in the air. There's not going to be anything for July. I, I totally need a break from the thought of knit alongs in July. Uh, I'm just having fun myself. Just kind of seeing where things go. Uh, okay, so I don't have any finished objects. I would actually be close, but I'll talk about that um, <laughs> when I get to that project. So I'm almost done. I'm so close. I am in the home stretch of getting both of these caught up to the same point. I know, I've been working on these for months. They just have not been getting a lot of love, but I found time this week to make substantial progress. So we're getting there. So, so close. Another, like, inch to an inch and a quarter to go and then it's just toes and heels that's the easy part I cannot wait to have these off the needles so so bad so the yarn is from Opal it is from their potpourri collection and it is the paradise colorway which is really fun and stripey I am doing an afterthought heel so there's this really dark line right there that's where the heel will go I like after five heels with all of my striped socks because it doesn't interrupt the stripes. I need to try that fish lips kiss heel or however you say it. I have the pattern, but since I've gotten it, I have not had the brain capacity to sit down and um, try something new. Because socks for me are just my go-to. They are my go-to, not thinking, just knit, 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 get it done. And that's what I love about them. It's in my fun girl cave bag with the little foxies. I love this, like vintage style fabric. Love it so much. Um, then the other thing I had started, so I talked about I needed a new project. I'm making like all these changes. I quit my job. Talked about going back to school, all this stuff. So this was like my fresh start project. And believe it or not, I got I got halfway done. I got halfway done and I'm looking at it going, this is really small. Like, I know it's a poncho, I know it's one size fits all or most or however you want to do it. Um, but it's really, like, it's not looking like the picture. So I took it to my LYS and I'm talking to the shop owner and I'm like, look, I'm really not happy with this. It's tiny. It's like so dinky. I don't understand. She's like, well, did you swatch? I'm like, oh. No, because it's a poncho. Like, it's supposed to be a little forgiving. Yeah, so my gauge was off. Of course. Because the one time I don't swatch for something. Um, so I was off on my stitches. And then, so I'm knitting this pattern. Talk about the pattern for a minute. So it's called Summertime Blues. It's by Michelle Lee Bernstein. And I don't know, I print it off in black and white because I'm cheap. So it's like this poncho, and it kind of goes on the diagonal. It has like this lace detail. 
And okay, granted, the model is smaller than I am. Like, I can tell from the picture, okay, he's smaller than I am. But, I'm still thinking, okay, it still covers her bosom quite well. So even if I'm a little bigger on her and it might come up a little higher on me, like, seriously, mine was, like, cut and, like, right across. Like, that's where it was ending. It was way too small. So then I'm like, like, okay, I know the whole theory of, you know, just block the snot out of it. But even stretching this to the size that you need to go to, it wasn't going to work. It was going to look overstretched. My stitches were going to be thin. It would not, I mean, it would have looked like I blo over blocked it. And over blocking an item can totally screw it up. I don't care what anyone else says. <laughs> That's my opinion. So, um, <laughs> this is the only picture they give you in the pattern. Beautiful. In real life, it's like a light green, green, blue? Blue. Yeah, summertime blues. So it's a real pretty light blue, kind of an aqua blue. Very beautiful. Looks great. Um, with this being the only picture that the pattern shows, I have one really big issue. In fine print, in the finished measurements, this page gives you no actual detail, just the info on gauge, needle size, yarn, blah, blah, blah. So it gives you size finished measurements. And then ticks me off. Um, so it's telling you, you know, if you want a wider or narrower, you increase or de in decrease. It says, so it's supposed to be 19 by 62 by 31, the finished size of it. Great. Well, on here it says wrap shown is 21 inches wide and 31 inches long. So that's two inches going across. Two inches makes a big difference. You might think, ah, what's two inches? Two inches makes a big difference when you're talking about covering the chest area, especially on a female. <laughs> so it says, um, 10 stitches wider in the stockinette, sec stockinette section um, than instructions. So what she's telling me is that the picture that she used to represent the poncho is not the instructions. That's wrong. I'm sorry. That's wrong. That's my high horse, my soapbox moment. Because 10 stitches to make 2 inches difference, that's huge. So since my gauge was off, and I will admit that part is my fault. But two inches on this girl and two inches on me is going to be a big difference. Obviously being a little bit more of a bustier girl and a bigger girl overall. I mean, this girl's tiny. She's little. So that's my beat. If you're going to design a pattern, then you have a picture of that pattern as written as your main picture. Now, it would have been one thing if she would have put that picture in the pattern somewhere else and said, oh, if you need a little more coverage, you know, here's a picture of it with 10 more stitches added. But it just really annoys me. You don't use a picture of a pattern that's different from the written directions that you're putting in. That, that just irritates me. I was kind of, I was kind of upset because that's a misrepresentation. But, okay, so I went and I swatched and I gauged, and I ended up being, like, half a stitch off or so. Even if, if I blocked it, it would be alright, I'm sure. But I went ahead and I added 15 stitches. Instead of 10, I thought, you know what? Because my gauge is just a hair off, like, it might have been one stitch for every two inches. Or half a stitch, I don't know. One stitch, no, one stitch for every two inches. Anyways, I added more. So this should get me at least close before blocking to where it needs. And it gives you blocking measurement, non-blocked gauge measurements, and blocked gauge, gauge measurements, which I find extremely helpful. Um, I am not using the yarn that it was called for because it's a Merino Tencel blend, and I don't like a Tencel blend all that much. So I'm using Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light, or TML. TML is my favorite. I would use it for everything. Um, the colorway is called uh, Spectrum, and I am alternating skeins because it's blues, um, greens, purples, little punches of pink, and even a little, a little bit of orange every once in a while. I don't know if I can get it close enough for you to really see. 
But one um, skein, they came out of the same bag, same dye lot, um, but one was more blue, had more blue in it than the other. So I definitely needed to alternate or the front and the back would look completely different. Um, I mean, besides the stitch count issue that I have, um, so far the pattern's well written. Um, I mean, easy enough to follow, you just repeat the same section over and over and over. So basically what you're doing is you're knitting two rectangles. So I actually have um, one more repeat to go on this. And then you knit a second one and join them and seam them and everything. And you have like this, it kind of goes across body with this little poncho. And it's supposed to be light and summery, um, hence why you're using a fingering weight. Um, I just thought it would be perfect for like cool summer evenings. There's sometimes, you know, the sun goes down and you just need to keep the chill off you. Um, so, I'm very happy with the fabric now. I went up just a needle size. I was using a 5 like the pattern recommended and I'm going up to 6. I'm also, I normally use um, Knit Picks or Knitter's Pride needles which are made by the same manufacturer. Um, but I was at the knit shop and I was ripping out, um, swearing under my breath with every rip. And uh, I didn't have any other spare needles. So I swatched with some at the knit shop. I swatched with the 6 and a 7. I got a better size with the uh, 6. So I'm actually using some loner needles from the knit shop. And they're um, the Chagu needles and they're wood. And I really enjoyed knitting with them. They're not the red cable. They have like a clear, really flexy cable. And like the, they actually kind of like, the cord turns in the thing. Unless if it's not supposed to. But I really like these. I would actually like, I would buy them. They're nice and pointy, like the Knitter's Pride or the Knit Picks. Um, I don't know if they're a birch wood or if they're just a bamboo. I don't know. There's an S on them. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. It has like an S and a square. But anyways, 4.0 millimeters is a US size 6. Um, like I said, very happy with it now. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know if you can see. See, this one's much more blue. I can see it on my screen. And like I said, in the light, they look the same. So like, if you look in the middle of this, there's a lot more color than the outside. So when I want, that must have been on the outside of the hank. But yeah, now that you can see them side by side, this one has much more blue. So I'm hoping to get that done soon. Because I really want to wear it. I've had some evenings that have just been perfect. And like I said, I'm almost done with it now, and I was halfway done with it before, so... I would probably just need one more repeat, blocking and seeing. Um, but you know, ripping out, making sure my gauge was close, and then rereading. Because I'm like, I had to read over this again, because I'm like, somewhere there had to be something that said what I was doing wrong. Like, and it's, it's, in all this, a big paragraph of stuff, it's not even like a clear, like, you know, alternate directions or alternate size or something um, because there is a schematic diagram with no that's what I was looking for I was found the schematic and there's no um, numbers written around it it just shows you how you're supposed to block it and I'm like surely there has to be somewhere that says what you block it to like there has to be a size because I don't want to over block it and it'd be huge on me and I don't want to under block it and then have to do it again so I know it's been it was a little bit more of a headache <laughs> last week than it was supposed to be but you know it is what it is so I'm just knitting along happily I, like I said I've enjoyed knitting it I can knit it and watch TV thought I heard Oliver whining uh, he's, he's learned how to get over the puppy gate so when we try to block off a certain area that has, he's learned how to go over it. Yay. So I have no 
yarny goodness or fiber or spinning or anything this week because I'm actually recording five days late. My sincerest apologies. <clears throat> but I guess we'll move into a slice of life because that's it for the knitting. My big long rant about a pattern. Um, so last week I talked about or yeah, it was a little, a little over a week ago. I talked to two, two weeks, two weeks. I'm sorry. Um, I talked about, you know, I left my job and taking this really big leap of faith and um, not living with regrets. I was stuck in a job where I love what I did, just maybe not the environment. And I want to do something that I really want to do, like something I'm passionate about and something that... Um, I'm going to wake up in the morning and be excited to go and do. And I was talking about going back to school and I looked into schools and there was really only one option for what I wanted to do that seemed realistic. Um, the tuition was outrageous. It was like 30 plus thousand dollars for a two year program. And I know school's expensive. Fully aware of that. Um, but I know there's also some financial aid, but being you know, married with kids and everything, having that extra debt is really hard to justify. Especially when the school was so strict on attendance. Like, they didn't care if your kids were sick, they didn't get, you need to be there. Uh, if you were more than 10 minutes late, the doors were locked, you couldn't get in. And my concern is it was going to be over an hour drive, probably hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half every day. And when I'm paying for school, paying for that much gas money, the thought of, okay, say it's a, it's a really bad weather day and I'm 15 minutes late for class and I just drove, you know, possibly more than an hour and a half due to weather conditions and then not to be able to get into class really made me uneasy. I mean, I have to admit, I mean, I don't mind the drive. I was willing to do it. Really, when it came down to it, the money, okay, if it could guarantee me that I'd end up where I wanted to be, I'd pay it. But when you're starting to get into that uncertainty of, you know, life happens. It just does. You miss days. You end up late. You know, not that I'd make it a habit, but stuff just happens. I mean, we live in, you know, the Midwest. We get some major snow. And I'm looking back, and last um, winter, like, my kids had, like, almost ten snow days. And this school called off school three times. So I'm thinking there were some really nasty days when you were expected to be there. And, um, you know, obviously my safety is to be taken into consideration. And it wasn't in the best neighborhood. So it was like downtown Cleveland kind of area. Not the best area. Um, there's definitely nicer areas to Cleveland than others. Um, and so I kind of just... I was a little apprehensive, I was excited, but apprehensive. I had had a um, tour and financial aid consultation all set up. And what I wanted to go for <laughs> um, was classic car restoration. So my family, both sides of my family, were in the automotive business. Um, my dad was a mechanic. He did body work. He did engine work. Um, I mean, really, when I look back and there really wasn't anything he didn't know how to do. Um, my family owns an automotive, um, shop where they fix things. Um, you know, all my uncles on both sides of my family are into it. And it's just what I grew up with. It's what I love. It's where my passion was. And my grandpa <laughs> told me, um, that, <laughs> okay, pardon my, pardon my, uh, French here in a way. Um, there's really no way to beat around what he told me. He goes, you just need to have the balls to go into a shop and ask somebody for a chance. And I'm like, yeah, Grandpa, I get it, you know. A little old school in my thought, right? Like, people used to do have apprentices all the time. And that's really kind of gotten away from it. Everyone thinks you need a higher education. Um, so, you know, I'm talking about it, and I'm telling him about school, and he's like, you're going to pay how much? And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, I don't. I wish I knew if this is the way to go. So then my stepdad brought up again, go somewhere and talk to somebody. So I did, but um, it was a week ago, two weeks ago today, 
I walked into a hot rod and restoration shop and I asked the owner if I could pick his brain a little bit and ask him what's the best route to go and I was basically told well you know you can go get this fancy education spend all this money and I'm sure you'll learn a lot but when you walk away with that degree because it was an associate's degree um, he goes I'm still gonna make you be an intern he's like you might know a little bit of everything but you're not gonna be the master at any of those things in just two years all the stuff they're gonna cram in fair enough right so I'm like well <laughs> do you need an intern <laughs> And next thing I know, he's like, can you bring me a resume? You know, it's a husband and wife team that own the place. Um, and she knows all about cars and works on cars. And so I took in a resume and everything kind of happened. And a week later, I got a call saying I got the internship. And I started the next day. So for the last week, um, I have been living the dream. Um... I have had my hands all over a 1939 Coast to Coast hot rod, um, getting it prepped and ready for paint. I don't get to paint. I'm totally not there yet. I would love to one day. Um, lots of sanding, lots of taping off for paint and all the stuff that goes in it. And I am having the time of my life. I go in every day excited, um, wondering what the day is going to hold because no day is exactly the same. And... Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's an unpaid internship. I'm being paid with an education, which hey, but I was going to pay somebody to educate me. Um, there's always cracks about my Beetle. <laughs> you know, it's a Volkswagen and it's a Beetle. Um, but you know, you take it in stride. The whole crew is a really great team. Um, everyone kind of picks on each other, makes fun of each other all day. It's a shop. It's what they what you do. Um, and I just love it. I love everything about it. I, I, at this point in my life, couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. And, um, so I'm just along for the ride. I mean, I can't say what's going to come next. I, I mean, it's working for, out for me, so I hope I work out for them. I hope it ends up being a really long, um, journey with them because I, I just enjoy it so much. So that's kind of where I'm going. It's I know some people will be really surprised and there's other people who won't be. Um, I just love getting in there. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I'm not afraid to use tools. I'm not afraid of any of it. Some of it makes me more nervous than others. I have to admit. You know, when you're told, yeah, go ahead and tape off this hot rod for paint. And you're going, holy crap, you're trusting me to do this? You really don't want to screw it up, right? Because this is somebody else's baby. You know, this is a client who is having us do this work. And I think, you know, if I were to take my beetle somewhere and have somebody do work on it, I'd want them to treat it the same way I'm treating this. So, but that's also exciting that I might have opportunities to be able to bring my beetle in and work on it there and get it in tip-top shape. I'm so excited about that. And, um... You know, just really excited for, for the future and to be given the opportunity to live out my dream because not not everybody gets that. And I'm fully aware what, like, a huge opportunity this is. I mean, <laughs> I made the joke as, like, for the first time in my life, I feel like a late bloomer because I'm, you know, in my early 30s just starting down this path. And this is maybe something that somebody more in their early 20s would do, or late teens and kind of trying to get into. So, not old by any means, but like I said, just a little bit of a, a late bloomer. But, um, so yeah, so I took, I took one picture on my Instagram. I know not everyone wants to see cars. It's not your thing. Um, but it's my passion, and, you know, my Instagram's not so much for my knitting. It's It's me. It's what I do. It's my pets. It's fun things that I do, it's work, it's, you know, not just knitting. So if you think, you know, oh, you want to follow me and you're going to see all this knitting, you're not. <laughs> so, um, a huge thank you to everybody for your concern when I quit my job, because there was lots of people going, are you okay? And it's like, I'm, t I'm great. I'm totally great. Um, and then, um, a huge thank you to all the support when I did post on Instagram, like the picture of the, uh, 
the hot rod and everything and uh, or pe a piece of it that's in pieces right now and uh and when I just posted about, you know, just making a big life change and all the support from everybody. And it's so great um, when, you know, when people just have your back. And, and they congratulate you on something that you're feeling really excited about. Because there's nothing worse than you being really excited about something. Someone's like, you're what? Like, and I've totally gotten that too. Like, you, you're going to go work in a garage with cars? Like, and, uh. I just, I feel like it's home. Like, I walk in, you smell that smell of tools and oil and paint, and you're just like, because <sighs> that's what I grew up with. Like I said, when, when you grow up with it, I don't know, I guess it, it's familiar. So, um, I guess I'm going to end it here. Like I said, thank you to everybody for all your support, all your kind words, um, and your enthusiasm. I had some people who were just so excited for me and it, it just meant so much. I mean, I've always said I have the best viewers and I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart. You all are great. Um, so that's it for me this week. I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon. Retro Lemon, let's see, we'll cut out some that I don't really use. Uh, Ravelry, um, I don't really, I don't, I don't use Plurk anymore, I don't really tweet, so we'll just say Instagram, Fitbit, still do Weight Watchers on and off. Um, not working in a candy store anymore really helps. <laughs> um, so until the next week or two, it's all kind of crazy. I'm trying to squeeze it all in. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep doing it. It just might be an every other week kind of basis. Uh, hoping to get on more of a schedule again. I definitely have more knitting time. It's great. So until, until next time. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye.